real tech, know, I, real quick sure. tech question for somebody who I know will give us the straight shit. The color of the manifold. Like as a someone, Chris, who knows the the inner workings of all these things and has spent the crazy money getting manifolds made, like, do, is it is the extent of this conversation the dimensions were not changed, or do you think that running sand through it could potentially have had like w what's your stance on it? It 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 depends on if you changed it dimensionally. If you didn't change it dimensionally, it's pretty irrelevant. If, yeah, and they said it wasn't. So, what about changing the surface, the the interior surface of the manifold with the sand? It, it's way less important on a boosted car than it is on a nitrous car. You know, you, you remember Mike? We used to put the dimples in the floor of the mm -hmm. manifold with carburetors, and that's to pick the fuel back up. When the fuels, when the fuel and the air mixture is at sixty psi and traveling by at Mach twenty nine, it that small texture does zero. It, it absolutely does zero. What they were mad about is you with NHRA, you cannot, you know, the old saying of uh, ask for forgiveness, not permission. You can't do that with them. They don't, they forgiveness does not work. You have to show them before the fact. But he did. Do, he did. And, though. It, 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 and the thing is they did, but then you know, if you don't get everybody in one room, everybody involved in one room to say, yes, that's okay. They're out will be, well, I didn't see it. Well, so-and-so approved it. Well, I didn't see it. We didn't all see it. And I, I mean, I hate to say this. I'd love the guys at NHRA, but they've done that for the last 30 years. I, I was in, when I was at ACE, the clutch company, we fell into that same deal. There was a clutch that they said, oh, it's not, not legal. Oh yeah. Danny Gracia said it was, uh, yep. Yep. I didn't. Graham said, no, I didn't. I didn't see it. Well, do you want to look at it? No, I don't want to look at it. Have Danny look at it. So what did that accomplish? <laughs> it, 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 it was, you know, and so then Danny made the ruling of it was legal. We were at Seattle, made the ruling that it was legal, but he'd already told me it was legal. The problem is like, we just didn't notify Grant. Grant. It's an interesting thing. And I kept coming back to the fact that like, I remember this, like at my dad's repair shop, Buck Brothers, Sunny Slope. Kirksville, Missouri. Like we were, we were, I can't even remember what we were working on. Oh, I remember what we were making. We were working on and uh, we were building, trying to build a set of headers out of like six sets of Jeg shorty headers for my little S10 pickup truck that had a small, an angle plug headed, uh, angle uh, plug headed mm. small block Chevy in it. So we were really struggling to get a set of headers that would work. So we were trying to make our own. And I was like pitching all these questions to my dad. And I'm a dumbass kid. I'm like 16, 17 years old. I'm like, well, isn't this going to hurt flow and blah, blah, blah. We need exhaust flow. We're going to have all these kinks in these headers trying to get around these spark plugs. And he's like, just jet. For well, he was like, just jet the nitrous <laughs> up. Like whatever it hurts, just jet it up. Get it up. And, you know, and it, but, and I kind of like on a grand scale, when you're, when you've got a fuel pump that flows a hundred gallons per minute, I don't know how much difference some rough texture on a manifold runner is going to really make it, an, like an 80 grit versus a 40 grit surface. When it's moving that much fuel and that much air, it doesn't do anything. It's zero. I, I mean, I, I could understand it on like a four cylinder comp eliminator engine, it, right? It naturally it's naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. Naturally Everything aspirated. matters, right? We're going to be down on the flow bench at rear Morrison for weeks on end building manifolds, right? I mean, if you go to rear Morrison racing engines right now, one of the purveyors of the finest pro stock engines that were ever made, right? They've got a section of the shop that is totally dedicated to manifolds that didn't make power. Like yep. if you look around, there's all it's, these sheet metal manifolds everywhere. Scary. It's yeah. terrifying. And you're yeah. like, what's that one? And they're like, that eh, made four horsepower less. You have know what I mean? Like, said, have they even said that it changed the te texture? Because I, I was I was thinking that they said it didn't. No, I, well, we, we just heard about the dimensions. The yeah. We heard online. Yeah. I, I, I wonder I, I wonder if it's simply the fact that they were using uh, like a non-traditional source. Because Wilson Manifolds is not, you know, common in in the fuel ranks, right? That's more of a, you know, door car, pro stock, pro mod stuff. Boosted and so stuff, yeah. boosted stuff. And I wonder if that was like the red flag or what really drew their eye to it. I guarantee that was the, you didn't ask permission. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't tell us you were going to use them. Why do we see that name on it? Why are we seeing how, how come they touched it? But yeah. from, from what and I they're heard, known for being, you know, cutting edge and yeah. finding, finding power with stuff like that. But, but it could be, you know, it could be as little as to um, how the O-ring fits on the head. 
you know, is this a ring 6,000 thicker than the other ring? So when it compresses, it leaves a 3,000th gap between the head and the manifold. That would make a bigger difference than a very light shot peening or very light blasting. What I heard was it wasn't even a texture change. It right. was a, as produced, it's a billet looking finish, you know, which is a, a borderline polished aluminum look. And it was a flat finish. And yeah, I mean, it just goes to show you. And I think that what Brian and you, we lost you there momentarily. I hope the storms are going to pass, Chris. But yeah, they're, uh, they're gone now already. <laughs> OK, we're, we're good. We're in the clear. Uh, yeah. Typical drag racing weather. Yeah. But it, he said that Brian Loans ha had stated and I haven't seen this, but I agree with the, the premise that we're glad. Right. Like, I mean, I, I think that if a guy is performing, it's uh, there was a comment here from Jim Parks, like Dale Earnhardt's car was the most inspected car during his winning years. And he kept winning. And I think that will really be the story of and that was probably the significance of what Tasca and company did in Charlotte was like, had they gone out and lost 10 miles an hour, it, it probably would have been a question mark for the foreseeable future. But the way they were able to rebound, not even rebound, but just to play the hand they were dealt and go right back into winning form, right back into record track record setting form. I, I think that kind of tells the tale. Yeah. And, and I, he, he, he kind of said it, but this just legitimizes when he goes to 44, that's all it does because then they go, Oh yeah, he went to 41 and yeah, we had this intake manifold that, uh, you know, uh, another team, he was cheating. He was blah, blah, blah. And then he puts a, an off the shelf, intake manifold on that everybody agrees is okay and goes out and runs just as fast as he did and now they're going to work on their program and he said they're going to go 244 243 whatever the number is when that happens how can you say oh look they're cheating again because we tore him apart or they tore him apart and, and he wasn't cheating and and mike it you know you can kind of remember this from the days i'm sure i loved when they come and board and stroked us I love whenever they come and and took us when you're number one qualifier or you set a new tr record and they come and tear your stuff apart and they walk away with their heads down. We never because qualified number one or set any records, so we didn't have to worry about that. <laughs> sorry, we were, we, sorry, we were trying to get back to crack a Miller Light, so yeah, yeah that's really what we did. But when when Tech walks out with their their heads down or, or nothing, don't take anything with them other than what they brought. You know, you just want to look around at everybody standing there staring at you and just. Smile. And you know what's funny, Chris? You say that too. Like, we board and stroke some cars at World Series and, and checked a bunch of stuff. And now it's kind of like, I mean, I don't want to say these guys are complaining about it or whatever, but it's like, huh, got, I got torn down or I got, you checked me or whatever. But it's, it, it's, it's like you're saying, take it as a badge of honor and be it, glad it that is, we're doing it. it, it I, they're looking at you for a reason. Yeah. It, you know, why are they looking at you? They don't. How many times did you board and stroke the guy that was number 17 in a 16 car field? You don't. <laughs> you don't. You did the top, not the bottom. So, yeah. yeah, it's a badge of honor. And it legitimizes everything you do for the rest of the event. Because, hey, they've proven that it's okay. They've, 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 it's went through their scrutiny. It's all good. You go out and you reset that record again. We back with Robert Patrick in 2005. Um, they board and stroked us twice at an event, the same motor IHRA did, because we set the record four times at one event. And they board and stroked us twice, even though they torque sealed the motor in and the heads on it to make sure it was the same. Hey, Didn't believe leave. it or not, that's still the Mount Motor Pro Stock record. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably is. It, it might be. It I might be. Go, I don't even want to how go much, there about that last 12 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, how much, and, and I think it, our, our, I think our listeners would appreciate this, but like, Bob said something that I thought was interesting. And I heard this in Charlotte, that almost all of these situations are fueled by other crew chiefs chirping H how much of that happens like share 100. with us i mean because it's like hey i can't figure out why they're running so well so they have to be cheating it, it it one of two things either i can't run that fast so they have to be cheating or i'm cheating and they're beating me <laughs> one of the two. And, and, and so so if i'm cheating and they're beating me they have to be cheating but, but no not you know all jokes aside 99 percent of the time it comes from another team, another crew chief that's struggling a little bit. That's a top tier team and they're struggling a little bit. You see somebody go out there and they think it makes them look stupid and they start 
start complaining. They start, wow, they're cheating. You know, I saw that they had this, or I saw that they did this. We, we had an incident one time and I, I hate to keep just reminiscing. We had an incident with, again, with Robert's car, we set a speed record and we had Toyo front tires on the car. Um, we were doing development for Toyo and uh, Mike Baker, my HRA comes over and says, Hey, you got to take those tires off. And I'm like, why? But they're not readily available. Yeah, they are. You know, who wants them? <laughs> so I made him bring the person over that was griping about it. And I'm not going to mention names. Um, he's a competitor today, or he still races today. But they came over and they said, well, we have to be able to buy them. I said, I want your camshaft. Well, you can't have my camshaft. You, we have a Kazi motor. Look, I want your camshaft. It has to be readily available. And long story short, they bought the two front tires for $1,500 plus next day air. But they were available. So so what I'm getting, and, and, it, and there was no performance advantage, zero. But they sucked that weekend. They were, a, you know, they were a top three car and they were number 14 or 15 that weekend. And so that's just kind of how they lash out and they pick on that guy. And unfortunately, unfortunate for people who are legitimate, like like Tasca, who was proven legitimate. Um, unfortunate for them, it causes some heartache for them. And but that's where it all comes from. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think it's it's kind of funny because I talk all the time. I, I compare drag racing in so many ways to a high school hallway. Like there's all these other all these different cliques, right? Yep. There's jocks and nerds and goths and all of our various versions of these things, right? And it, it's funny because it, it's a game of telephone. Like if I've I mean, if I had a dollar for every different variation of the Tasca intake story. <clears throat> that I've yeah. heard or or been told uh, over the course of the last couple of weeks. I mean, we we'd be pretty well to do right now. I mean, it's everybody's heard a different version of it or whatever. And I, you know, I'm glad. I mean, I we did uh, address this last week on the show, just talking about it. it was cool to see NHRA even attempt to kind of talk about this or at least state their their case. I do think there could have been more follow up, especially with the way Bob went about it, because Bob, you know went head on and like, Hey, we're going to address this. We're going to discuss it out in the open. And I would love to see a little bit more of that, you know, from NHRA, but I do think it, it, overall it's a positive thing. And if nothing else, like anytime I see a bunch of scuttlebutt, scuttlebutt online uh, regarding drag racing, good, bad, or otherwise, I, I feel it's a positive because people are talking about it. And if people are talking about it, they care. And if they care, that's what matters. Right. It, and it, I think that those moments are, are a positive for our sport. It, it keeps it on the top of the search engine. And, yeah. and so that's the first thing you see. But that one thing that I will say that NASCAR does right is if there is a violation, if there's a, a rules issue after a race or, or at a qualifying, whatever it is, and they inspect a car and they find something wrong. First thing NASCAR does is they do a press release and they do typically get up in front of a, on a podium and will tell the story, tell why it's wrong. Every sport I mean, does that besides it, us. Yeah. Except except NHRA. Yes. NHRA, IH, IHRA was the same way. I'm not picking on NHRA. But that transparency, you know, or, or they get up there and they say, hey, we tore this car apart and there was nothing. You saw us tear it apart. That's why we're talking up here. There was nothing. 100% by the rule book. That would, quad, would squash some of this, you know, this in the hallway, you know, ninth graders versus the 12th graders bickering because they're going to say well yeah well i know joe over here was the one griping about it and they just did a press release and there was nothing wrong well joe's an idiot you know and and it would kind of self medicate itself you know or it would it would i mean i think there's a lot of benefit that could come from a little more transparency you know behind some of those decisions and i know it's an uncomfortable place to be i feel like we have to face the music every wednesday you know what i mean that's like, why no you get what... that's why you get paid the big money though to be in that position you that's know right. i mean I, I, you know you're like roger well, goodell you know he goes out on the stage he gets booze you, yeah. you know, the reason is though because eventually like i don't care if you're on the school board or a city council or whatever eventually you're gonna piss everybody off i mean like if you're making the decisions and you're the face of that you know you make a decision you piss off half the people next decision <laughs> You piss off the other half of people. You know what I mean? It just, it from, just. From, from my works. time, from my time as a tech guy, though, one thing I did learn, it doesn't matter who you make mad or who you appease at the time, as long as you're consistent and you can be backed up, you can back yourself up with facts. They cannot be mad at you. They can't disrespect. They cannot. They have to respect you. 
if, if you can go to the rule book and show them by page what it is, prove what it is, they may not agree with it and they're pissed off, but they have to respect you. And, and, and even as a tech guy, that's how I felt. But as an organization, it's the same way. You know, they should be able West, you can you remember one of the um, and I'm not going to name any names, but one of the World Series of pro uh, we found a, a car that had an illegal rear gear in it. And it was a little bit of a, with everybody involved, it was a little bit of a touchy situation, but we had to deal with it and we had to address it. And in the end, the guy wasn't happy. He had to take the rear gear out of the car. He wasn't happy. But then an hour later, he comes over and he's like, you know what? I know it because you checked me and caught that. You protect ever you protect me from everybody else just the same. Yes, well, and I mean, and what was life. interesting about that particular deal and was that that car had been running that gear ratio all year long. Yeah, and we yeah. were eight yeah. months into the season, so it's like that was something that I was proud of. Like Chris and yeah. I hung our hat on that. That was like reason to crack open a beer because it's like, hey, we caught something <laughs> that had otherwise been undiscovered for yeah. the last several months of racing, and I, I think that type of thing is important. Like uh, for me, the legitimacy. Like the legitimacy of the competition is not a goal. That's not an aspiration. That's an expectation. Yeah. Like you, you, that cannot be drawn into question. And the moment it is, I mean, honestly, I think that that's perhaps the reason we haven't seen more traction in sports gambling in our space because of some of that shit of, of guys laying up or guys, you know, strategically qualifying in certain positions so that they can, you know, impact their first round matchup or whatever. I mean, we, we have to be mindful of that as a sport that we have to hold ourselves to a really high standard if we're ever going to get to that next level, because that proverbial next level there, every one of those in, comes with increasing eyeballs, increasing investments, it, it, more and more stakeholders. And as more people and deeper pockets and bigger oper, operations and bigger sponsors get involved, that expectation is going to it's just going to be magnified over time. So, I mean, I appreciate the NHRA doing what they can. Jim Parks is in the comments right here saying they've been doing a lot more spur of the moment inspections in multiple classes, not just the fuel ranks. I've heard that as well. I think the NHRA mm -hmm. suffered from a little bit of a, they, they, they had to shrink their, their, their team yeah. during the COVID resources. years and yeah, resources, resources were limited to do that. And I think they're in the and process to even of publicize it. Yeah. Talking and, about and, publicizing it, get up on a doing a press release and getting up on a stage and talking about it, that is hard to do as well and takes resources. And so it, not it, only to it, enforce it, but th just to get the communication aspect of it, um, well, you know, well oiled and, and yeah. communicated is is a is another resource. And I don't think that they want to devote that resource uh, to that as well. Yeah, and and you know, none of this is meant as a, as a diss to NHRA. Um, yeah, no, the, it, it's the you know, they're the premier organization. They are, they, a lot of where we are is because of them. Um, and all of this is, is just discussion, but, and, you know, back, if we go back to 10, 12 years ago, NHRA's tech department, I don't know the numbers, but I'm going to say it was three times what it is now, people-wise. So, so they've seen the effects of, of the financial strains and they've seen the effects of, of getting good employees. Um, we used to, when, when we raced NHRA pro stock, I mean, it wasn't uncommon for them to, Hey, we're going to template your car. Just, just out of the blue Kiwi, the guy that was from, um, um, Australia, New Zealand, he, you know, he would just come over, Hey, roll over here. We're going to, we're going to tech your car again. Well, you just did it one run ago. Yeah. We're just going to do it again. They had no reason to, they didn't, there was no performance or anything. They just wanted to show you that they were staying diligent and, and, and that's, that's good for an organization. And then of course, you know, like, like Mike said, you know, as resources diminish and you can't devote resources to that, the, the fan base or, or the, the internet, the internet has multiplied this. Oh yeah. They ain't, I ain't been teched in, in, you know, 17 races. They haven't done this to me. That doesn't mean they're not doing their job. They're just selectively doing their job better. Well, they're it's not, like, where did you qualify? Yeah, they're, you well, they're know what I mean, just, like, yeah, they're not just I mean, pulling it's... you out for no reason, like they did us, just to retemplate the body. They're not just doing that anymore, but they're watching. Hey, wow, you run three miles an hour faster in the back than anybody else. Hey, let's template his body. They're not. It's not that they're not doing that. You just don't see it as 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 prevalent and random as you used to. They're still looking at the sheets. They're still watching the run sheets. Hey. Wow, this car, you know, 60 footed, you know, went 940 and every other car went 990. Yeah, he's dragging the blanket. 
let's go check and make sure it fits the two inch rule, you know, and they're doing that. It's just, we don't see it because it's not as, as random and prevalent. And the only time we hear about it is when somebody jumps on, you know, on, on social media and starts yapping on it.